Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today's tutorial is part number 10 in my Making Snake and End Curses tutorial series. Uh, we're going to be picking up where our last tutorial left off. Um, we're going to be fixing um, a bug that we introduced uh, earlier on um, that's just a really simple thing we're going to fix. Um, bugs happen. Uh, then we're also going to kind of move around some of the code, uh, consolidate uh, actions that we do a bunch of times into functions. Um, just, you know, general cleanup um, before we move on to the next tutorial, which will be uh, detecting collisions, you know, basically doing the game over state. That'll be the next tutorial. Um, so, as always, if you guys like this content, consider subscribing to see this stuff right as it comes out. Give it a thumbs up um, and leave any comments down below. If you want to support the channel a little bit more, um, there's a PayPal donate button down below. Couldn't do this without you guys. Um, so, appreciate all your support and let's just get started. So, um, to start out, we are in the snakegame.hpp file, and this will actually be the only file we will be editing today. Uh, all the other files are rock solid at this point. So, um, so you'll see in the snakegame.hpp file, we are at in the uh, update state function or method. I don't know whatever you want to call it in this case. Um, the update state method, I guess, because it's within a class. And you'll see I've just added some comments here just to remind me what we're doing this tutorial. Uh, so first off, the bug that we're fixing. So just to demonstrate um, what's actually the bug actually is. So right now there's four pieces on the snake. And then as soon as we run across an X value or a Y value, you'll see it accidentally added a snake piece. So there's five now and that shouldn't happen. And that's uh, actually a simple, very simple error. Uh, what it is is in this conditional statement here, um, we say if next.getx is not equal to apple.getx and nextgety is not equal to apple.gety. So technically speaking, this anytime we run across a y or x value, um, this will fire even though it's not supposed to. Sorry, I just hit the mic. That's probably going to make a noise. Um, so it's going to fire even though we don't want it to. So really, we want this to be an or statement um, like that. Uh, that'll actually fix the problem. So now if we make and run again, you'll see that if I bring it over to the x, y of the a, it stays at four. So we didn't add any pieces by accident. Um, so that's simple. Again, very simple bug, very simple fix. Awesome. Um, so the next thing I'm going to move on and do here is um, so another problem with our code here is that uh, actually I guess I'm say from the beginning. So right when we start, you see the apple isn't there, and then it appears. Um, so I kind of want the apple to show up right at the beginning, right at that point, state one, the initial state. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this code to check if the apple is equal to null. And if it is, we want to uh, create the apple. So we're going to move that up into the initialization state uh, up here. So what this is going to do now is that at the end of the initialization state, we'll have all of the snake pieces as well as the apple. So just to demonstrate that, you see as soon as the game starts, we have the apple. So that's a quick fix. All right, so now that we've um, kind of just updated those bits there, uh, another thing I want to do is Technically speaking, I want to move this create apple uh, to the end of update state instead of at the beginning because um, essentially what, what's going to happen is if the snake uh, eats the apple, then we want to check at the end and, and recreate it if it's already been eaten. Um, that actually brings up another good point. So another way to fix this conditional, because right now when you go over the apple, it doesn't actually create a new, or I think it creates a new one. Oh, it doesn't actually delete the apple. So right now, um, we're not actually eating the apple. It just stays there, I think. Let me double check that. Um, so if we go up and get the apple, it deletes it, but it doesn't actually like delete the apple. Um, and what I mean by that is this apple pointer still has data in it. So this check won't work. It's not gonna see the apple as null. It's, the apple still technically exists. It's just not drawn on the board. So what we want to do is at the end of this conditional, we want to have an else statement. And the else statement is essentially just going to delete the apple. So the, there's two things we actually need to do to delete the apple. We actually delete it, delete apple like that. And then um, we set apple, the point, the, the apple pointer equal to null. Oops, capitalize that like that. 
So now that we've done that, and we run the snake game again, you'll see when we eat the apple, it properly redraws it down here. So good, that, that problem's fixed. Um, all right, now that we've kind of gotten the game working as expected, um, we can make some kind of consolidation of code changes. Uh, essentially just, you know, any actions that are repeated, we wanna break those out into their own function. So what I like to do um, is I like kind of to, to go down my code and look at sections um, or yeah, sections of lines and kind of say, okay, could I consolidate that into its own method that has like a simple name? For instance, this method, right, or this bit of code here, it's repeated. Uh, it's there and it's down here. And I could technically, I could give this a name. I would call it create apple. So I think that's a good candidate for um, a method that we could create. So up here, um, I've just added some, again, helpful comments to keep me on track here. Um, so one of the methods we're going to create is one called create apple. So it's going to return void because it doesn't actually need to return anything. Technically, we could have it like return an error or something if it if it got complicated, but this is such a simple function or method, we're just going to have it return void. Um, and we're going to call it create apple. It doesn't take any parameters. Um, it's just going to be um, a simple action function or method. Uh, and then we're just going to copy that code into the create apple function or method. And actually, what I'm going to do is instead of putting this um, if statement inside create apple, I'm going to leave that up to. Um, the the whatever's calling it, I'm gonna leave it up to them to check if we need to create another apple. Um, so what we'll do down here is we'll say if apple not equal to or equals equals no. I don't want to feed on my keyboard fell. Um, if apple equals equals no, then we want to create apple like that. And so let me go back up here. Oh, looks like I accidentally added an extra uh, curly brace there. All right, so now we've added that there and we can do the same down here in our update state function. Sorry, that first one we changed was in the uh, initialize function there um, at the bottom there. So if apple equals equals null. In this case, I think we can assume it is, but just to be safe, I'll double check anyways. Apple equals equals null. Um, then down here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to replace the inside of the uh, if statement here with just create apple. Um, so that's one way we can kind of, you know, consolidate some code that's repeated. Um, that's essentially essentially the whole point of a method is to kind of take an action and uh, or a, a set of lines of code and to break them out into something that you can call multiple times. So we can actually do the same thing here with um, this bit of code here. Um, so essentially, it might not look like we have this repeated, but up here, this section here where we have snake, peak ne snake piece next, board.add next, snake.add piece next, and then you know we kind of repeat that a bunch of times here. If you look at this code here, it's actually really similar. Um, the only difference is we have this conditional in the middle, but it's we have snake, peak, snake piece next, board.add next, snake.add piece next. So it has all the same similar components. Um, so I, in my head, I'm like, well, we could definitely take that and put it in its own method. Somehow we just have to figure out how do we make sure that, because up above, we don't really need this conditional um, because the apple doesn't exist yet. So that right there tells me, okay, the apple doesn't exist yet up here. So we'll, all we need to do to make it so that we can call this function um, up here and have it do the same thing is say, okay, uh, if apple equals equals, or if apple is not equal to null, because you know obviously if we're going to check apples x and y, we have to make sure it's not null first. That's actually something we should be doing anyways. It's just a safety check in C++. You should always check if something's a pointer is null before you call any of its um, methods or anything like that. Otherwise, you get an error, uh, a runtime error. Um, so just like that, and I'm also going to. Wrap, I don't know if it's totally necessary, but I'm going to wrap these or statements in brackets or parentheses just to make sure um, that the order is uh, ran correctly. Um, so just like that, we've kind of made that function so that or that method so it'll work. 
So now we can actually take this code here and we're actually going to take everything from the if statement down um, to here. And what we're going to do is go up to our little section up here. I'm making these uh, private methods because they're only going to be called by the controller class. They're not going to be called by um, like the user. So uh, we're, I'm going to turn this into a method called handle next piece. It's going to return void uh, handle next piece and it's going to take a snake piece as its only parameter. We're going to paste that code in there. Um, sorry, this if statement's a little long. I tried to make the text big enough so it's easy to see. Um, and what this is going to do is it's going to take an, an, the next snake piece. It's going to see if um, the apple is not equal to null first and then it'll check to see if the uh, position of that next piece is equal to the apple. If it is, it does the whole thing where it um, you know, deletes the uh, previous piece at the end of the snake. Um, if, it, if we landed on the apple, we want to delete the apple and set its uh, pointer value to null. And then either way, we add the next head to the end of the snake or to the front of the snake, I guess. Um, so now that we've done that, we can take this code up here and consolidate it into um, a simple one-liner. I'll, I'll write it up here first. So we'll call handle next piece, and we're going to pass it the first piece, snake piece one one, oops, like that. Oops, forgot the semicolon, and that actually takes care of all three of these lines. Um, and we can do the same thing here, but what we'll call instead is handle next piece, and then we'll just do snake dot next head like that. And we can do that actually two times because we have the same code twice there. And then we set the direction of the snake to right because that's how we're drawing the snake at the beginning, at least in my case. You could initialize it however you like. Um, and then we can call that handle uh, next piece one more time. So we've essentially taken all that repeated code and turned it into a method, which is um, much more concise, much more um, to the point, and it makes like just looking at it we can kind of understand okay we're handling the next piece and this is the next piece okay we're handling the next piece and the next head is generated by the snake here and that's what we're passing it now we have to do the same thing down here um, where we replace this here with uh, just that handle next piece function um, call from up here the same exact one handle next piece snake dot next head um, I believe that should do it. Oh, uh, one more thing I wanted to consolidate um, just because it's kind of its own action is up here in handle next piece. Sorry if I'm scrolling around really quickly. Um, up here in handle next piece, we want to, I'm going to consolidate uh, destroy apple into its own uh, method um, or those two lines of code into their own method called destroy apple here. So we call void or uh, have it return void call it destroy apple, it's going to take no parameters, and then it's just going to delete apple and set apple equal to null. And I, I think it just makes it a little clearer, we're saying, okay, this is destroying the apple, and what does destroying the apple mean? Right now it means delete the apple and then set its pointer equal to null, maybe in the future that's going to change, um, but if we need to destroy the apple in any, for any other reason, we have this helpful destroy apple method now that we can call. And if we need to change what destroying the apple means in the future, we only have to edit it in one place instead of editing it in a bunch of different places. Um, all right, so I believe that's it for um, changes we're going to make. Let me just make sure I don't have any more to do. Looks like we're good. So now I'm going to try and make and run this here. No errors, great. <laughs> um, and now if we go down and eat the apple, boom, it makes a new apple, it adds one to the snake. Um, we eat the apple again, and now we have six pieces, we eat the apple again, seven pieces. So looks like it's working as expected, um, and the code is much more neat and nice. So that's it for this tutorial. Um, in the next tutorial, we're going to be, let me just cancel that here. Actually, yeah, let's make and run again. In the next tutorial, uh, if you, I don't know if you've probably been playing around with this, if you noticed, uh, when collisions happen, nothing happens. Like if you run into yourself, there's no game over yet. Um, if you run into the wall, the snake just disappears. So again, that's not the expected behavior. If you run into the wall, you're supposed to die. And that's just because we haven't uh, 
checked for collisions yet. Um, and that's something we're going to do in the next tutorial. So if you guys like this and you want to see that tutorial right when it comes out, again, consider subscribing down below. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions about what I did here or any suggestions for the future, feel free to leave those in a comment. Um, and if you, again, if you want to consider supporting the channel a little bit extra, I have a little PayPal do donate button down in the description. Um, I hope you guys are having a great day and I'll see you in the next tutorial.